Amen. 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 We serve a good God. Amen. Thank you, worship team. Just so appreciate uh, the worship team and so many people here at Cheers. Uh, they make, uh, they, really, they really make us look good. Um, you know, uh, the hours that they spend and the, the work that they put in, the effort, the worship team, uh, people that clean the church, people that work with the kids upstairs, the multimedia. There's so many facets of the church, and, and we've been blessed with just so uh, many good people. And I just, uh, I just really appreciate you all this morning. Why don't you give yourselves uh, applause this morning? Really? <laughs> Come on. You're better than that. You're better than that. You're doing better than you think, okay? You're doing better than you think. I know last week Dennis got up here and gave everyone a good butt whipping, and once in a while you need that, but you're doing better than you think. Are you joining me today, or? <laughs> What's going on here? Well, Joe, I never know what you're going to do. I don't want to sit up here for 15 minutes while you ramble on. So, you know, so. That was not planned. So today uh, we're doing Sometimes something Sometimes he has a, little... a hard time recognizing anointing, but yes. you know, it's a work in progress. All right. Anyways, we're doing the cheer show this morning, and we're, uh, this is something that we do every once in a while, and we, inter we just kind of interview people, because everybody has a story, but more than that, we all have a testimony, and the Bible says you overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. And before we do that, before we call people up, we've got, we got to do the announcements and, and all that. But I just want to talk about, there's a difference between having a sad story and a testimony. And um, we don't interview people up here to hear a sad story. You, your sad story needs to turn into a testimony. It, you know, um, I met God in the valley. And he touched me and he changed me, his grace, his mercy and his love. And so we, we want to, if, if all you have is a sad story, you need to begin to press into God and say, Lord, I want you to take this story and turn it into a testimony. And so we're going to hear some testimonies this morning of what God has done in people's lives. Um, and we just think it's important every once in a while to do this, to highlight different people and, and hear their story. Because sometimes you come to church and uh, you shake hands and you see their face, but you don't get to hear their testimony, and so this is what this is about. Um, but before we do that, we need to talk about the announcements, what's going on here in Cheers, Joe. What's, what's going on this week at Cheers, Joe? <laughs> oh. um, Marella, you have an announcement. That, yeah, we've gone up to Warren's Jeans a few times, and it's great up there, so I would encourage you to come out to that, and uh, you will not be disappointed, because it's always a great time, playing in the snow. Um, so here at Cheers this week, we have praise and prayer every Tuesday evening. I just encourage you to come out to that. It's always a great time meeting with God, and uh, we had a great uh, last Tuesday. We, we just, I did an altar call, and like everyone came up. Because I did, I got the, I, I did an altar call for someone else in their life, so everyone responded, and it was really powerful. So I thought, man, I'm on to something here. So from now on, every altar call I do is going to be for someone else in your life, so you'll be free to respond. It really worked out well. But we had a great, uh, great time on Tuesday night, and um, uh, so I just encourage you to be part of Tuesday nights. It's, I really feel like it's the backbone of Cheers, and we just really uh, believe in that. And um, as well, we have our... Uh, we're planning a trip to Guatemala, a missions trip, and uh, I know there's many in the church that have been, and, uh, but there's always room for a few more to go, and uh, working with Heidi and Minor, a great young couple down there that are just doing incredible things for God, and it's just, uh, we, we sponsor them monthly, but even more than that for them, it's when we, we send teams down there just to be with them and to work with them and be involved with them, and so if you've never been on a missions trip, 
I would really encourage you. It will uh, challenge you. It will stretch you. Uh, you may get food sickness, but you'll also meet God in a new way. So um, I would really encourage you to, to uh, think about it, pray about it. And uh, we'd like to see a, a team go down probably at the end of February, it's looking like. And uh, So that would be good. What else? What else? We have a box at the back. It's all decorated. That's for Teen Challenge. Every year, um, they send out boxes to different churches. And there's a list that was a staple to the bulletin. It's just stuff they're collecting for the guys. And uh, they have a, a women's center also in Abbotsford. And um, just to make their Christmas a little bit brighter, a little bit better, you know that we, um, we have such a great appreciation for the Ministry of Teen Challenge. And we're so um, fortunate to have the relationship we have with them. And, and so we want to bless them. So we want to fill that box up and, and just bless those guys. It's, it's amazing the work that they do there. And so it's really close to our hearts uh, at this time. And we just want to um, encourage you to give to that. And as well, we would ask that you would uh, you can keep us and our family in your prayers. We had one of our cousins pass away this week. She was uh, someone who struggled with addiction for many, many years. And so... Uh, finally fell into succumb to it and uh, so we'll be going down to Vancouver so we won't be here next weekend we'll be doing the funeral down there and um, you know so we just we'd appreciate your prayers pray for grandma and uh, my uncle Dennis if you can keep him in your prayers it's his second daughter that has gone down that path and uh, so there's a lot of grief there and um, but we really just believe it's it's funny Dennis and I were talking about this morning and uh, God spoke the same word to us for the funeral so we really feel like God just uh, wants to, is and will speak a really uh, powerful word to everyone that, that will be there. So we're excited about that because God uh, is in control and um, it's going to be Saturday. Yeah, you can pray Saturday at 2 o'clock. So we appreciate your prayers. And, uh, and then as well, Dennis and I are going to speak at um, a Teen Challenge retreat in, at the end of February. And we've been invited by Anthony to go down there and speak to uh, all three Teen Challenges. And so... We appreciate your prayers for that, too, as we minister to those that are uh, just really trying to break free of addiction and, and, uh, and, you know, the timing of it all. You kind of see, okay, God's hands in it and just stirring our hearts. So we just believe in that God will uh, just bless that time when we're with Teen Challenge as well. Yep. And you can pray for uh, Mike Lang because he's going to pitch in for us uh, this week coming up on Sunday. I know uh, Mike already told me he's got a word. He's got a word for this Sunday, and, and you better be ready. So. <laughs> And we want to thank Mike for stepping in last moment to, to do that. No pressure, Mike, but now everybody thinks that you have a word, so <laughs> you better get a word. And uh, here at Cheers, we don't take up a traditional offering, but we do believe in the principle of tithes and offerings. And we have the offering boxes at the back at any time during the service. You can fill out an offering envelope and put it in the box. And we know that God is faithful to us as we give to the work of his kingdom. And we appreciate everybody who's been giving faithfully and... and um, Trusting God with that. Yeah, it's, it's amazing, actually. In the, in the, um, summertime at Cheers, it's always like kind of hold our breath because it's always a tight time financially. And um, we just came out of it roaring strong. Like, just good on you guys. Like, uh, the finances of the church are, are doing really well. And uh, so I just really thank you for that and just your, your, your faithfulness in, in that area. Um, you know, we've been doing this for almost 10 years now, and, and we've never been in debt as a church. We've always paid our bills, and, and God's always been faithful. And, and, you know, the hand of God, is just, it's, it's, it's great. And, um, and, you know, I just encourage you, you know, if you have never practiced that principle of tithing and giving, that you would just test God on it. Because God is good, and he's faithful, and he has promises wrapped around tithing that are really powerful and mighty and strong and, and uh, my life I can testify time and time again just how God provided and we've just been faithful we've just Olivia and I just believe so strongly in that principle and we've seen God work it out where it didn't seem like it would work out doesn't mean we've always been overflowing but we God's always met us and um, and so just yeah. yeah and I just I've made the connection ever since the giving's gotten better I've noticed Joe has been dressing up a lot more, and uh, so there might be some sort of correlation there, but I feel a little bit underdressed up here this morning, so I really don't appreciate that much, and uh, I think you should take it down. I thought you'd be used to it by now. You've been my brother for a long time. I think you should take it down a notch, really, but that's okay. 
You don't need the extra clothes, Dennis. Some people do. <laughs> Anyways, that was probably inappropriate. Probably. It made no sense. But uh, why, don't we, um, why don't we call up our first guest? Our first guest on the Cheers show this morning is Amanda. Cole Herzer. Cole Heiser. Cole Hauser. Really? That was awesome. Yeah, I knew I wasn't going to say it properly. But I figured you would say it properly so you could tell us your last, how to pronounce your last name. So, Amanda, how are you doing? Doing good. Good. Sorry if I'm a little nervous. Last time I had to share with people, I had a translator, so I had time to prepare as I was speaking. Right. Well, you know, you're going to do awesome this morning, and we're glad you're here. Um, how long have you been at Cheers? To, uh, since about the beginning of summer. Okay, good. And so we wanted you to kind of just um, share a little bit of your story this morning, talk about, you know, your background, how, um, kind of how you were raised. But we want to also hear about what has brought you to this place where you are now and what God's doing in your life now. So why don't you just, why don't we just start out and you can t kind of tell us a little bit. Did you grow up in Penticton or how, how did that work? local. Raised and born here. Uh, growing up, I uh, kind of had a bit of a rough childhood. Uh, my dad was abused as a kid, and so we had a bit of that passed down. But, you know, he, in his, I'll, uh, you know, I'll, he tried his best, you know, not to hurt uh, his wife or his children. So I have to give him props for that compared to what he went through. I, what I went through was nothing. And, uh, and so as I got older, I kind of realized, oh, hey, uh, like something's not right. Something's different compared to all these different families. Like my friends have these incredible parents who like teach them all this stuff. And I, you know, I grew up not knowing like my value or my worth as an individual or as a woman. And so eventually when I got older, I started to, you know, rebel against my family and my own mother and my father. And I got emotionally, you know, rebellious, disobedient, just did what I wanted. And then around the time I graduated, I started going out more. I started, you know, partying, smoking weed, getting promiscuous with all types of people. And, uh, and you know, and I didn't let my family help me because I didn't trust them. And, uh, you know, rebellious and all that. And uh, someone came into my life. So I became an authority figure, but, and they tried to help me, but, and instead they took advantage of me and abused me. And, you know, at this time I had a lot of stress, I had a lot of anxiety, and I was on medication for that and whatnot, but there was times where I was so stressed out where I was driving, like I would just blank out and I'd be on the other side of the road just because I was just like, oh my God. So, and just completely just freaked out about life. Okay. I couldn't even think about pills. How old were you? How old were you at that time? Around that time, uh, I was about 17, 18. Okay. And Amanda, did you grow up with a faith? Like, was, where, where was your faith in this? My family was grown Christian, but, you know, eventually as I got older, I put myself at a distance from that. Okay, so you were in a really dark place. Mm -hmm. You didn't, at that point in your life, you didn't feel like there was much of a hope, much of a future, mm -hmm. I imagine. And so... Tell us about the turning point when things really begin to click for you and change for you. What, what, what happened? Well, uh, it would be this January. I applied and went to YWAM. It was in Kona, so that was the main reason why I went. <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> exactly. Three months in Hawaii. Hello. Perfect. And so I went, and, you know, I figured it would just be a school, you know, I would memorize a Bible verse and just, you know, write some pages, and I'd be like, oh, yeah, that's easy, whatever. But then I got there, and the very first book that they uh, gave us to read for the first week was called Pure Heart. And it's written by uh, this couple, Don and, no, not Don, but it's a mixture of their names, Tom and Donna Cole. And they have this amazing testimony of what they went through. And I really connected with this book. And some of the chapters have talked about the father heart and the mother heart. And, uh, and it really talked about a lot of the things I went through, and I just broke down crying, and I was just like, oh, my God, what am I doing? Like, my life is going so downhill. What am I doing? And then, uh, you know, I went and talked to the, the, you know, Tom and Donna, and I talked to them about what I went through, because they went through similar things as well. And I was really connected, and I really felt like God touched me and was saying, 
like I'm here, I'm not, you know, you're not in the dark anymore. And during that time, it really became like an awakening for me. Looking back now, do you see, um, even through the darkness and the brokenness of everything that was going on, can, can you look back now and see like the hand of God, even in, even in maybe even a dark situation where God was just at work and you didn't even realize it or use people that maybe surprised you? And mm -hmm. uh, Actually, one of those people was, I was dating someone around that time. Uh, you may know him, James Duncan, mm -hmm. and he really, really helped me during that time, and I really have to thank him for that. He was awesome for me. So God was continuously kind of like knocking at your heart, of your, the door of your heart, and just even in through the darkness, he never left you, did he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. You know, it's a, a real example of the grace of God, because here you are thinking, I'm just going to go to Hawaii, and I'm going to have this three-month experience, and God... It, with certain expectations, and God just meets you there, and that's His grace. Yeah, I yeah. totally didn't expect it. It was kind of like, kind of like a rude awakening, yeah. but it was a good one. And so, when you're in that time of addiction, uh, with the addiction and all that kind of stuff that you were talking about, mm -hmm. and there feels like there's no hope, and you know the Bible talks about there's a hope and a future, and when we're in that dark place, we don't oftentimes even consider that we have a hope or we have a future. Mm -hmm. But now you've encountered God, you've encountered His grace. Mm -hmm. He's done a work in you, and he's, he's setting you free. He has set you free, and he continues to set you free. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you see for yourself in the future when you think about that first now? Well, when I think about, like, like about my story and whatnot, I just think, like, there's so many people that are in that dark place, especially people when they don't, you know, they're not able to, you know, just hop on a plane and go to Hawaii. <laughs> and, uh, and so... Uh, for my outreach, I went to Haiti, and I met a lot of young ladies there that went through even worse things than what I went through, and it really broke my heart. And one of the things I do want to do is go back to Haiti and, you know, help those people, and, you know, maybe get some, you know, actual credentials so I can do it, not just, like, go up to women on the street, do you need a hug? <laughs> but it's so true. God often does that. The things, the, the areas in our lives where we struggle, and then we have victory in that area. Mm -hmm. God often uses us to help people who are going through that same thing. Mm -hmm. And it's actually the things that, you know, we find um, our victory in. God uses us to help, help bring people victory in that same area. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's really cool. And so um, share a story about Haiti. Do you have a story that, one particular story or one particular woman that you talk to? or? Uh, well, actually, uh, I have so many stories about Haiti. I could sit you down for two hours. Um, during one of our last sessions with, uh, in our last week, we had this, uh, this small, uh, Bible study that we had with a few people, and we talked about family, and we talked about the difference between anger and discipline, and, uh, and the team kept on going and focusing on me and saying, this was what happened to her because, you know, of anger, not because of discipline. And so if you do this out of discipline, which is actual love and not anger, you have to remove yourself then and bring yourself to love your child with proper discipline. Sorry, I just wanted to ramble right there. Uh, you know, just discipline your child with love, not with anger. And so, uh, you know, I shared a few stories and whatnot, and I told some people a few examples like, hey, if this happens and you're angry, you know, take a step back. Go take a run or chill somewhere else, and then come back when you're cooled down and talk to your child, explain what they did wrong, and, you know, discipline them correctly. And uh, one guy came up to me afterwards, and he was like, I totally didn't get this before now. Like, my child, like, whenever he would do this, it would make me so angry, just so mad, and I would just, I would just hit him. I would just slap him. I would just throw him against the wall because, you know, I thought that would make him, you know, understand. But now hearing what you went through, and hearing, like, your side of things, like, I don't want my son to, to, you know, to go to a dark place where you went to. I want him to grow up and be a man and be strong, like you are now. So I'm going to do what you told me to do. That's cool. That's wow. great. It's great how God uses uh, those things that we go through, eh? And just, like, those things that the enemy tries to destroy us with, and God turns around and gives us that testimony, and you're able to uh, find it as a strength to reach out to others. Um, Amanda, one thing I really appreciate about you is that when Amanda came here, you know, she really wants to work with these hurting people and these hurting women and stuff, but you're just willing to get involved and you're like, you know, so Amanda's got involved with the Beautiful Girls program. And it's like, she's not 
you know, sometimes it's, it feels like people are just waiting for this big opportunity, but you were just so willing, you know, hey, I'll start with these young girls and I'll pour into them. And, uh, and that's just, you know, that's, that's God's heart, you know, because wherever you are, just to find that place where you can pour your life into and give to, and, and it's, um, it's wonderful. And so, you know, I, props to you. I appreciate that involvement. And just, um, I know Olivia really appreciates having you be involved with beautiful girls. And, and uh, that's awesome. Amen. So your goal is to go back to Haiti. Mm -hmm. So you're thinking of going to school eventually. Is that what you're thinking and getting some teaching? Yeah, I'm going, teaching? Mm -hmm. I'm going back to YWAM next year to do a secondary course where you can actually get you know, credits that like you can transfer to an actual college, not just a YWAM college. And so, uh, and I'm not sure if I am going to go to an actual college, but you know, I'm young, I got years, I don't need to worry yet. <laughs> So, um, are you going to go back to the one in Hawaii, or are you just no, going to go to the one in Oliver here? Expensive. There's one in Oliver, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, you know what? Let's pray for you, and we're going to pray that God will give you wisdom, and we're going to pray that God will uh, direct your steps and lead you to the right place. And we just want to um, celebrate what God has done and what God is doing. So, why don't you just stretch your hand towards Amanda, and we're going to pray for her. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. For the testimony. Yes, Lord. Lord, I, I, I think of David's words so often where he said, The Lord reached down from on high and he pulled me out of deep waters and he set me on a rock. And Lord, that's Amanda's testimony. She was in, a, she was in those deep waters. But Lord, you led her and you, you guided her, Lord, and you've, you've reached down and you've pulled her out of those deep waters and you set her on a rock. And Lord, we just pray in the name of Jesus for wisdom. We, Lord, we pray that you would direct and guide her steps. Lord, that you would open the doors that she's to walk through and close the ones that she's, she's not to walk through, Lord. That you just make it very clear. Lord, and as she, as she says, Lord, I want to I wanna be used to help others who are hurting, Lord. We pray that you would provide. Lord, that you would provide financially. Lord, you provide emotionally. Lord, you provide emotional support and spiritual support. Everything that she needs, God, will be there at the right time. Lord, we just want to thank you for the work that even now she's doing in Cheers. Lord, as she uh, ministers to these young girls, Lord, that, yeah, Lord, you would give her wisdom. Lord, that you would anoint her for this task. And Lord, just, I pray for just um, a covering over her in, in this season of her life in Pentecost and God. Lord, that you would just um, show her the areas where you want to continue to do a deeper work. And Lord, how, give her the strength to continue to surrender in every area of her life. Even like that word said today, Lord, burn away. Let that fire just burn away every part, the Lord, that you want it to burn. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thanks. Thank you, Amanda. We really appreciate you sharing your story. Yeah. Cool. Uh, our next guest come to us all the way from, well, halfway between Oliver and OK Falls. <laughs> Carrie and Aaron, why don't you guys come on up? We'll give you the corded one then. Aaron, then you can both have your own. How are you guys doing? All right. Are you nervous? Yeah, a little. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. I wasn't nervous earlier. <laughs> Make sure you hold the mic up nice and close. I think it's the mic that makes you nervous. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's great to see you guys. Yeah. Um, excited to uh, hear you guys' story today. Um, we had uh, Carrie and Aaron over a, about a month ago, I guess now, and, and just got to know them and, and hear their story. And I was just like, oh, man, I, wanna, I want everyone to hear their story because I just, the hand of God and the grace of God uh, on your guys' life is, uh, is, is, is incredible. And so we, I really... Uh, yeah, thanks for being willing. Yeah, and um, so why don't we just start with your guys' background? Uh, like uh, you guys were, were where you grew up, your church background, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, well, we both grew up in Penticton. Um, I went. Sorry, I I went to uh, Bethel my whole life. Like when I was that uh, young, my parents still go to Bethel. Um, they've been going to Bethel for like forty-five years or forty years, something like that. Um, I, me and Carrie knew each other when we were in high school, and then we met, we met up again uh, in 2004, 
we met again and uh, started dating. And um, and Carrie, you, you grew up in Penticton too? I grew up in Penticton too, and um, I grew up in kind of a half Christian, half non-Christian home. So I went to church a little, and then we would stop and didn't, um, my dad's not a believer, and my mom is, and so there was a lot of kind of back and forth in our home, um, a little bit kind of pulling on, on each end kind of thing. Right. And then, so in 2004, you guys started dating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, neither... we, we knew each other in high school and wanted to date, but we didn't because he had dated one of my friends, <laughs> best friends. Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, we... Uh... <laughs> But I digress. In the end, yeah, he made yeah, the right yeah. choice, yeah. so come on. She could, uh, I charmed her, and we started dating, and um, we, were both, um, uh, we were both in addiction at that point. Um, not going to church. Yeah, no, not going to church. Where now, so, were you uh, in town here, or were you down? No, we were in Vancouver. You were yeah, in Vancouver yeah, at the time, uh, right? We both went to high school here, but then uh, I lived in Vancouver for 13 years. And, um, I mean, my, I have, like, as long as I can remember, I've never really been a Christian apart from like growing up in a church, you know, um, I always uh, was just um, defiant and, uh, you know, I never had any real uh, non uh, Christian friends and uh, I just went down a dark road really uh, young. And, so what um, you just kind of what started out as partying for you ended yes, up into yeah, something sure, deeper. Yeah. And, mm -hmm, yeah. and um, I mean, I won't get into what my addiction looked like, but um, when me and Carrie met I and mean, we just like started partying and stuff and, uh, and then very shortly after um, we met in 2005, I got in a terrible work accident. And I, explosion. Yeah, an yeah, explosion. Well, you want to tell, give us a little bit of detail on yeah, that? Yeah, so uh, I'm a pipe fitter, and some compressed gas exploded. And uh, I had a uh, brain injury and uh, broke both my legs, broke my arm, broke my collarbone. Right, because you went to open up a locker. and it, Yeah, it, I, I had a job box and I used to smoke cigarettes and I, I lit my lighter to, to see because it was dark and just exploded in my face. Yeah, and... Um, and now the doctor, no, was it the doctor or the work safety guys, they were saying, what were you standing? Sorry? But where you were standing, how yeah. it was like... Like, I mean, it was like the, the temperature that morning um, was the perfect temperature to keep the gas uh, sitting inside the box and just the air fuel um, ratio was perfect for ignition. And so freak I mean, explosion. Yeah, it was just a real freak explosion and I got, um, I mean, I got hurt very badly. And uh, I mean, God just uh, saved me. I mean, like I had, I had burnt my eyes and but I kept my vision is fine, my eyes healed. And um, like my bones broke in my legs, but my knees were fine. Like I'm really active now. Like I recovered almost 100%. I, I run and you know I take care of myself and stuff. So um, God just really saved me that day. Because when the explosion happened, right? Um, you were standing kind of in the one spot where yeah. If you had been a little more to the right or to the left, yes, they figured for sure. that it would have killed you, right? Yeah, and I mean it went it went out up the bottom instead of like up into my face, and I still managed to get a head injury. But and you um, hit the guy behind you. Yeah, really I hit hard the too, guy right? behind me, and uh, I hit him, and like it, it blew his knee out. Like that's the force just sent us flying. And it knocked him out as well as you. Yeah, and I, I woke up on the floor in the basement, and um, and he had you know, managed to get up the stairs to call an ambulance and... There was shrapnel in, like, in the roof and in the walls. The fire mm -hmm. chief came and told us about the damage inside the home. So mm -hmm. the it likeliness the of him dying was like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, like the, it was a new house and, and the plywood, we were in the basement and the plywood on the floor above came right up off the, yeah. off the, off the joist. So, it was so really serious. I, I just have a quick question here. Mm -hmm. Like in pipe fitter school, mm -hmm. yeah. did they say like, did they say <laughs> yeah. like, don't take your lighter yeah. and yeah. like, they never did. To, to, work, to put it to the gas? They never did. And they if they did. taught me that, it just went right over, <laughs> went right over your head. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I was just wondering. Cause and even, even now when I see, cause guys do, it's really, you know, me off topic, but common practice to light a lighter when you can't see something and it's like a terrible idea. Anyway. We've been buying him <laughs> flashlights ever since. Yeah. Yeah, he has like all, 50 flashlights. All flash kinds lights. of flashlights now. So. So you ended up in the hospital, right? Mm -hmm. And you were in the yeah. hospital for quite a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And at that point, you came out and you were even further into addiction with the prescription yeah. drugs, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, my addic uh, addiction just uh, progressed, uh, you know, really, really fast. Um, I got into, uh, you know, painkillers. And, um, and then Carrie was just, uh, I mean, we had already fallen in love. And um, 
our addictions just grew at the same, you know, together. You know, we just did everything together, and so we just we, weren't coping. Yeah, we weren't with coping. the accident. We mm -hmm. already were um, bad enough into addiction, but I think the accident kind of put us over that edge of just not being able to cope, and um, we didn't know how to handle. You know, he suddenly was incapacitated and I was suddenly looking after him and I had seen him they I was in the hospital and saw him blown up and I still I have that vision in my head and it I don't I don't even deal with that vision well and um, we just both just kind of just went like this you know we just didn't know how to handle what was going on and um, all we had known since we were kids how to deal with our problems was to drink or do drugs and just escape, you know what I mean? To not feel. Um, I, neither of us had ever really gone through our emotions as it was, so then the impact of that was just that much worse. Mm -hmm. And so then, so you're in this place and it's, things are falling apart and, and uh, kind of what was, what was the point, what, what kind of happened to say okay this is we need to do something we started fighting and broke up and and things literally got to the point that um, his dad thought he would die from addiction um, my parents my parents I have a funny relationship with them and they kind of didn't notice me so they didn't and then it, my addiction got bad enough that they finally noticed me and um, right at the same time both our families kind of intervened and went, oh my gosh, what is going on? And they realized that we were um, really, really in trouble with it, um, without getting into details, you know. And um, it was kind of funny because at the time, him and I would drink together and cry and talk about how badly he needed help. And I never looked at myself at all. I looked at him and said, you know, you're a mess, you're going to die, this is bad. And he would agree. And we actually talked about him going to treatment together. And then um, my parents kind of discovered me going downhill the same way. Um, so this one night, actually, it all kind of came together right at once. And his dad went out looking for him. Him and I had gotten in a terrible fight, and he was off doing stuff and his dad went and got him and and they made a plan to go to treatment yeah and um my some stories have slipped out uh like my parents don't ever want me to feel guilty about like what i've you know the harm that i've done to our family in the past and it's all you know i've made amends with that living my life now but uh, it slipped out um i mean just without my parents um we just would not be where we are, right? Mm -hmm. And um, there's some stories that I slipped out of my dad fasting and praying because um, mm -hmm. he thought I was going to die, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, they're, um, excuse me, <clears throat> their uh, uh, closeness with God has just really, um, they've been like a rock in our lives, you know? Right. So, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, anyways, this. After that, we, he went off to a men's treatment center, and I went to a treatment center somewhere else, and um, we actually kind of broke up, and, and I kind of thought we were going to just go our separate ways because things were so bad. But once we got into treatment, um, the healing just started beginning, and I mean, neither of us went to places that had anything to do with God, but um, probably a lot of you know that just AA itself is based on um, God and, and believing in God. And um, when that was brought up to us in our programs, we both immediately knew like what higher power was. You know, I never questioned for a second if my higher power was the people in the room. It was always God to me, and it was to him as well. And um, I needed that kind of a program to bring me back to God. I did not at that point need church and I, it's hard to explain, but that wasn't going to help me. It wasn't going to fix my problems. I really, really needed um, that program that, that really unraveled what had become this huge ball of, um, of 
darkness around the addiction because the addiction was really just part of what was wrong, you know. And um, that program was sort of this this path to God, and, and I, to this day, still really encourage that that's a good thing to be doing, and hopefully people find God with it, but um, do, you, do you want to add to that? Um, well, yeah, like I was saying, for me, I uh, found my way back to uh, God through the 12 steps, and, and like Carrie said, it was uh, just to be, come to believe in a higher power, it was just obvious to me that it was going to be, you know, Jesus, right. and um, I just very, very slowly, like it was um, like trying to uh, feed a squirrel, like you know what I mean? Like just very, very slowly, I just kind of, I just started praying. And I never really asked God in, back into my life for uh, a number of years, but I just started praying and um, God just kept speaking to me and, um, and me and Carrie just started kind of growing together. I mean, we've been um, clean for eight years now, a little over Praise eight God. years now. Yeah. So. Um, you know, ever since uh, we've come to Cheers, uh, really, um, just things have really, really um, changed and opened up for us. And um, we just uh, just love this church so much. Actually, uh, when we were worshiping, um, if I can just share something. Um, like, you know, when uh, God just speaks to you and just being a new Christian, it's kind of crazy for me just to, like just like somebody says something like, right in my ear. You know what I mean? It's just uh, very overwhelming for me when that happens when we were worshiping there uh, God just said uh, this is your home now and I just started crying like it's like wow <laughs> so that's awesome yeah I just love your guys story this is a power story of just God's love and grace and redemption and how you know he knows what we need when, and when we need it you know and and you guys needed that program and you need that time apart and to God and how God just but he had you both in his plan, and he brought you guys both into this place, and it's just, it's incredible. And there's a lot to be grateful for and thankful for, as I know you guys are, and yeah, uh, yeah. a lot to celebrate there. And, and um, so now you guys are, are here, you're at Cheers, and, uh, but there's the, the battle continues, as it always does in our lives, right? And, and uh, for you guys, it's really been Carrie's health. Mm -hmm. And uh, you want to maybe just share a little bit about that, is that right? Um, I've been sick for about, it's going on to four years now. Um, I just suddenly became extremely ill this one day. Um, it, I mean, it was a little bit leading up, but it kind of seemed like it just, all of a sudden I was really sick. And um, we haven't been able to figure out what was wrong with me all this time. We've gone um, through, like, hundreds, I don't know if I should say a thousand, because it, we've done so many things to try and figure out what was wrong with me and, and just how many things we've tried and doctors and specialists and all these things. And I actually have just very, very recently, literally in the last couple of weeks, just gotten a diagnosis finally, which is um, it's Lyme disease. Um, yeah, so um, it's very, very hard to get diagnosed and I finally got it's even still is kind of like a funny diagnosis, but it's basically Lyme disease. And um, I've actually just, right now, I'm just overwhelmed with, like, if you knew kind of like the whole lead up to try to get diagnosed. Yeah, it's been a real battle, a real struggle. And, and uh, you, when you were sharing that with us, just how... Uh, you know the the symptoms that you went through, and just how it's kind of like one of those things that you go, know, is it is it just people think it's just in my head and all that mm -hmm. sense of you know I should be able to do more and I shouldn't be. You know, and so I know it's been a real struggle for you guys, and uh, that's great. I mean, there's just the symptom. I mean, we prayed we prayed about that when you guys came over that yeah, God yeah, would. Yeah, uh, yeah. And just um, uh, just this week, uh, Carrie has found a uh, doctor uh, because there's so many different treatments to treat limes. Um, Carrie's now uh, found a doctor in California that is going to help her, and um, through uh, phone, uh, th through over the phone and through email, and uh, he's going to help her. And uh, so this week has just been really huge. Like she's gotten diagnosed, and she now has an actual doctor that specializes in this, what she specifically has uh, to help her. So, um, you know, this week uh, God has just really answered our prayers because uh, there's been times uh, that we, you know, just felt uh, quite hopeless, right? So. Mm -hmm. Uh, God has really answered our prayers. So, I will just speak on, like, rather than, kind of like what you were saying at the beginning about 
not talking about a sob story, you know, up here, but talking about, um, you know, like keeping it about God. And um, I will just say that I've, a lot of times I've kept asking God, like, why is this happening? You know, it's really hard to understand, especially because I'm this really, really driven person. And if you knew me in the past, you'd know I'm actually just like crazy full of energy and um, kind of almost like a workaholic. Like I really love doing and going and being with a lot of people. And this illness has debilitated me to the point that I, I'm not myself like in any way at all. And, um, and I just kind of keep asking God like, don't you want to use me? Don't you want me to do more? Because I will do more. You know, I will do whatever you want. I want to help people. I want to be involved in things. Um, and instead I'm helpless. And um, I've kind of gone through like all these different things to try and make sense of everything. And I think in the at this point that I'm at is um, I never stopped long enough to get to know God. I was um, I was going and going and going, and I thought I knew God, and I and I tried to include Him in my life in the things that I was doing, but I didn't really. And and through this being so ill, um, I've developed a relationship that I had no idea was available to me, and and that I would never would have been able to grasp. Um, and it's like, it's like I look at God like this lifeline now, like before everything I did was how I either deserved something in life or how I just sort of earned my way through life. And I'm, I've been reduced to nothing. There's been times that I can't do anything, I can't even feed myself. I just lie there and... Um, and so I've had to really learn from a very hard place that everything is about God and everything comes back to God. And without him, I really am nothing. Um, every time something good comes to me, it's just this knowing inside that it was God. And, um, and I think like me having that new, you know, knowing this, when I get well, which I know I'm going to get well, I've, mm -hmm. I've hung on to that, I've clung to that, and, and I, my entire determination around getting well has always been that I believed God's real and God wants to heal me. Um, and so I keep fighting. And, and um, the things that I've learned now, I know they're going to make my entire life different. And they've changed me, and they've changed Aaron, and... Um, you know, even just my re relationship, <laughs> once you go through a chronic illness, you find out who your partner really is. And I have the best partner I can ever, ever hope for. I've never imagined um, that that was what love could have. I've seen kind of messed up things in my own parents around what love is. and. It's always been conditional. Um, so he's made up for dating your friend. Way to bring out full circle, Joe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's awesome, you guys. You know, I just really feel like um, God has some surprises in store for you guys. Yeah. That. Uh, you're going down a certain road and you, and you think uh, things are going to look a certain way. And I just really feel like God just wants you guys to know he's got some surprises in store for you guys that are really going to, uh, you're going to find yourself like in, sh in awe and almost shocked at the things God's going to unfold in your life. And uh, it's not going to look the way that you guys think it's going to look because there's so much more to you guys than, than you even you realize. There's so much more to you guys than meets the eye mm -hmm. and how God's going to speak to you guys and how he's going to lead you and how he's going to place you in key positions 
That's what I really feel like God's saying. He's going to put, place you in key positions to, uh, and you're going to find yourself in leadership and being used by God. Aaron, God does speak to you, and God's going to continue to speak to you, and you're going to find the word of the Lord getting clearer and clearer in your heart. And, and I just really encourage you to just be, be strong in the word, get deep in the word, because God's going to, God's going to use you. He's really, there's a, the, the, the anointing of God is really on your guys' life. And, and uh, you know, you're in the situation you're in right now. You're in the place you're in right now, but it's just the training ground. And, um, you know, you're, you're more than a pipe fitter. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Absolutely. And so um, I'm going to ask Kirby to come back to the keyboards. Because I think we need to pray for Carrie right now. I, th I think we need to get some of the ladies, even right now, to come around. We're going to pray for you. And uh, we'll pray for Aaron, too, but we're just going to focus on Carrie right now. And uh, I, I just think... The Lord that you made that declaration that you know that God's God's in this he slowed you down for a reason but I just believe that he's saying you know this the season of being on the sidelines is coming to an end and we just need to have uh, an intervention right now of the Holy Spirit and the healing power of Jesus Christ and so why don't you get some of the ladies to pray and we're gonna speak healing and life and restoration into the situation Father, we just thank you today, God. Lord, that you are all powerful, you are almighty, God. Lord, how you have spared their lives, Father. And Lord, how you have just brought them uh, goodness, Lord. Lord, that you are a good Father. God, you are a good Father, Lord. And we just declare that over their lives, just the goodness of God, Father. Lord, that you would just move in might, Lord. God, that you've revealed this thing for what it is. So, but now, Lord, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. We rebuke this Lyme disease, Lord. We recognize it, God, as, a, as, a, as the enemy, God. Sickness is the enemy, God. And so we, we declare, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, that the, the, this Lyme disease, the spirit of Lyme disease, would be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. And, Father, you would just bring a healing touch to her body. God, you'd cause every aspect of her body to come into alignment with your word, God. Lord, you are her healing. Healer, God, and she has clung to that God in faith, Lord, or that you will heal her, God. So right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we just we just stand with her and we declare the healing of Jesus. And Father, I pray, God, that you would just begin to unravel the plan for their life, Lord. God, that you would begin to move the pieces around, Lord. God, they're, they're, it's like a chess piece that God's showing me, and they, He's just moving pieces around. He's moving pieces around to get you to the place you need to do to get get to 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 bring you into alignment with the right people and the right relationships. He's moving pieces around because he has things in store for you guys and so we just stand with you as your church today and we rejoice we rejoice we rejoice in what God has for you we rejoice in what God has brought you through and for your tomorrow is going to be brighter than your today that tomorrow is going to be brighter than today tomorrow is going to be brighter than today and we just declare a hedge protection the power of Jesus Christ that would be resurrected in every aspect of their lives in the name of Jesus Lord in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I just pray this healing virtue would just extend, Lord, right now over this body, God. Lord, that you would just release the healing virtue of Christ, Lord, just over everyone here today, God. If you have any kind of thing that you're struggling with right now, why don't you just raise your hand just as, a, just as an act of surrender. And, and, and Lord, right now, God, that you would just bring healing to people's lives, Father. God, that in this moment, God, in this, in this divine moment, God, that Holy Spirit, that you would just come and that you would touch lives. That you would just come, God, and you would cause bodies to come into alignment with your word, God, that you are the healer, God. And Lord, you have created us, Lord. And you know every aspect of who we are, God. And we just receive the healing virtue of Jesus Christ. And we thank you today, God, for you are good. You are good. You are good. And we stand upon that truth that our God is good. In the name of Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, Amen.
we'll just maybe just close with a song here today. We just thank everyone for uh, December. If you want to come sing. <laughs> I'm not going to sing. <laughs> that would really destroy the whole atmosphere right now. And uh, why don't you just stand? Isn't God good? Isn't it just cool? Like, I just love share, hearing God's story of redemption. I love hearing God's story of his power and his grace. And, and he's just good. He's just good. Even when we go through the dark time, he's with us. Even when we go through the battles and the struggle, he's with us. Even when we, we aren't seeing what we want to see, it does not diminish the fact that God is with us. God is with us. He's with you in your lows. He's with you in your highs. God is with you. And his love is for your heart, you, you today. He's, God loves you. He really does. And so as the, as the worship team just uh, uh, leads us in one last song, I'm, we're just going to open the altars. We're just going to invite you if you want a uh, uh, prayer for whatever it is, be it for you or someone you love. I just invite you just to come and, and we'll just pray with you and just uh, stand with you and just declare God's goodness and truth over your life. Amen. You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, where faith may fail. And there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep, my faith will stand. call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves when oceans rise my soul will rest in your embrace for I am yours and you are mine in deepest waters your sovereign hand will be my guide where feet may fail and fear surrounds me you've never failed and you won't start Let me walk.
My soul will rest in your embrace For I am yours And you are mine Amen. We started off this service just declaring the Lord, He is good. And Lord, we just thank you for the testimonies this morning of your goodness. The evidence of your goodness this morning, God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Be blessed as you go. Uh, we're back open for prayer on Tuesday. Please come and join us. I'm just going to have the worship team just keep playing. And as we're dismissed, you don't have to rush out, but you can go get your kids. And, and the service is dismissed. Have a great week.